welcome back to yet another political episode. So we have the conservative um, commentator and strategist, Red Eagle Politics. He has is released a video on North Carolina 19 hours ago, which really, um, if you haven't watched this video, it's pretty short. Go ahead, watch it. Um, but what this is... Uh, he was talked about is North Carolina turning into more of a Florida North Car and it, and the truth is North Carolina has become very conservative North Carolina uh, there has been tons of conservatives moving to North Carolina um, and Florida they are the two most th two states that conservatives have been moving to although North Carolina has a liberal governor um, a Democrat governor, Roy Cooper. He is very limited of what he can do. The ex uh, legislative branch and the state legislature in the state has been totally occupied by Republicans. So yes, I also released a video on, um, the, let's see here. I released a video on um, North Carolina, specifically on it was specifically on, let's see here. Yes, Governor Robinson. Robinson 2024, the high chances in winning North Carolina. Um, the, so, uh, today, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do a red wave North Carolina scenario. This could be either your prediction. We are not going to do candidates. Because we're just going to have it Democrat and Republican. And this is going to be in 2024. This could be the results in the presidential race, the gubernatorial race, the attorney general race. Because North Carolina has its annual, uh, no, not its annual, its four-year races, uh, the attorney general and all that stuff. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get out our 2020 North Carolina gubernatorial 2020 United States presidential election in North Carolina. And we're going to do what we did with the Hurricane DeSantis. And what we're going to do is how red can North Carolina get? Uh, what is the breakable counties? So you'll see in the 2020 election, Joe Biden was predicted to win uh, the election in North Carolina. You'll see uh, most polls are favoring Biden in North Carolina. You'll see here in 2020. Was that the case? Yeah, Trump got some polls, but most polls went for Biden. Uh, but was that the case? No. Tr well, I want to see a graphical chart, but. But was that the case? No. Trump won because North Carolina, he won by like a 0.30% margin. A close race indeed. But let's take a look here. Here's a precinct votes. Um, the results by county. So let's keep in mind, North Carolina, it's in the south. It is a hot spot for conservatives to go to. It's a, a like a paradise for conservatives. It's in conservatives' minds to go to North Carolina and Florida. It's warm. It's a, a, it also is a part of the conservative environment. However, there are liberal strongholds in North Carolina. There have been there are African American liberal African-American strongholds, the, the Black Belt, um, which we will be talking about, that are unbreakable. But so, but we'll go by, we'll go over it one by one. We're going to only click on blue counties, uh, like I said, because we're doing a red wave scenario. Uh, the Republican counties that have already voted Republican for Trump in this election, 2020, are going to go for Trump. In, or Republican or whatever in 2024. This 
uh, county here, Anson County, um, the margin, they don't have a margin either. North Carolina, I swear. But I'm not going to do, I'm not going to go by five this time. I'm going to do it by, um, I'm going to do it by whatever, no, within 10 point margin. So Anson County is within a 10 point margin. So we're going to give that to Republicans. Uh, Birdie County, we're going to give to Democrats. Buncombe County, Birdie County, oh, who's Bur what's Birdie County? Well, Birdie County is a part of the Black Belt, African American stronghold. B majority of African Americans, it's rural, Windsor, it's just liberal African American stronghold. You'll see the county seat there only has 3,582 people. So yeah, very unpopulated area, but full of African American popu uh, population. You'll see that too. So, Birdie County is a part of the Black Belt, and there's going to be places that are just unbreakable, like the Black Belt, for instance, in North Carolina. Half of it is going to be unbreakable. Buncombe County, I believe it's a part of the Black Belt. 59% that's unbreakable. Uh, Chatham County. I'll have to count. And you get if we talk, you saw my Texas video. That's a part of the Raleigh Metro. So that's within 15 points, I believe. Double ditch, d double digit margin. 44, 45, 46, 47, 48. 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, yeah, this is like a 13, 12 point, so Chatham County, sorry, Chat, Ch Chatham, you could possibly go Republican, I don't know, I don't want to hurt Chatham County's feelings, so we're going to do it unclaimed for now, because possibly I might put Chat Chatham Cumberland County for sure. Let's see here. Oh, Polk County. Interesting flag. Yes, this county is part of the Black Belt. This is a this three counties right here. Yeah, this open down here in southern North Carolina is a black stronghold. So I'd say Hulk County has some moderates. So I'm going to give it some, this to Republicans. I'm also, I've changed my mind about um, Chatham County. We're just, I'm just saying, this is a red wave video. So if I truly think Chatham can go Republican, I'm just going to go ahead and give it. Um, so... Chatham also, largest town, pit, what's the population? Yeah, 76,000 people. Uh, I think it's a part of the Raleigh Metro. Let's see if there's some mentioning of Raleigh. Yeah, it's part of the statistical area of Raleigh. Um, two million people in that area. So influential too. Um, we talked about Hulk County, Mecklenburg County, Nash County. This is definitely, will, would go straight to Republicans. For sure. That, I believe it did go Republican in some races. I don't know. But I could definitely see this county going for Republicans. Absolutely. It's a part of the Black Belt up here in Northern North Carolina. Um, New Hanover. Now, New Hanover is an interesting county. Now, New Hanover actually is a very big city. And that's the city of Wilmington. Wilmington, North Carolina is a city 
with uh, it's one of the biggest. It's a city with 115,000 people. And you think, oh, Hanover County. This should mean that Hanover County should be pretty strong Democrat. Am I right? Well, to be honest with you, Wilmington's actually a pretty conservative city. Uh, if you think of it. I don't think they have the politics out there. But I'd say the city, the city did vote for Biden. Uh, it, and it did vote for Governor Cooper. Uh, however, if you take a look at the Hanover County politics, you're going to see uh, the county only voted for Biden for two points. And the e county even voted for Donald Trump. The city also voted for Donald Trump. I'd say possibly Hillary could have won it. Uh, so the only city in the county is Wilmington. And the towns in they have in the county are Carolina Beach, Cure Beach, Wrightsville Beach. So yeah, oh, despite having Wilmington, a major city of North Carolina, this county is pretty conservative. And I could definitely be seeing if it's being swept in a red wave. So, in Hanover, Orange County, uh, part of the Black Bell, I believe. Pasquatank, that's a Native American uh, name. This one did go for Biden. This is a very moderate county. And this did, I believe, go, this went to Republicans in 20. 22 so we're gonna give Pitt County to Republicans also a part of the black belt more of the moderate Eastern North Carolina is where the black belt um, kind of is uh, Pitt And now we're at towards the end of our list. This is not going to be a Texas video, so don't worry. Um, Washington County. Uh, Washington County is going to be... Uh, it's also a part of the Black Belt. Right near the end of the Black Belt. Uh, that area. So... We're going to do... Wat Watoga... Yeah, this is the Native American county I want. I, there is a Native American county in, in North Carolina. Let's see. Um, there is a Native Ameri good Native American population in North Carolina. There, There is groups, very diverse state of North Carolina. They do have Native Americans, um, African Americans. Well, you'll see, yeah, down in that area, you'll see. Um, I will confirm that down in southern uh, North Carolina, it's Native American, which explains why we have some blue states over here. We have this state. But, yeah, I think this is a more... So, I don't know what I'm talking about. This is not a Native American county here. So, never mind. Watoga, but however, it is a Democrat hold. We're going to end with Wilson County. Wilson County, also part of the Black Belt. All right. So, friends, we're going to see the results. The rest of the counties are going to go blue. And the counties that go blue, they are unbreakable. We have clicked on all the counties that... By margin, Republicans possibly can break. These are the count. I'm clicking on the counties that Republicans can never win. Mecklenburg, holding Charlotte, North Carolina. I doubt they can break that. This county right here, two blue, two Democrat. Over here, up here, and then up here we have the Black Belt counties. So, and it's Republican.
Americans did flip a lot. Comparing this to the map. Now let's fill it all in. politics is right about North Carolina turning into a um, into a Florida and I agree with this theory I do think North Carolina is going to be competitive more Republican and that's just it if Republicans want to win more races and become a dominant machine party like a, I don't know like make a mon I don't know talk about but become a dominant party in general dominant group of dominant winning party with winning streak they're gonna have to focus on their own states like what they're doing in florida absolutely what they're supposed to be doing in north carolina okay so this would be like a 56 percent to a 42 percent victory um for sure republicans are going to need north carolina to win so if Red Eagle politics' his theory is right about North Carolina. Republicans should really applaud this. Republicans would win a total of 85 counties. There are 15 counties in North Carolina that are unbreakable. We have the Black Belt up here. These are rural African American colonies, a part of the Black Belt. This county right here is Native American. Um, I believe it has a mixture of African and Native American populations, but this is also a rural county. Manterville County is also uh, is an urban county. It has Charlottesville. This county has Asheville, big city. And then we have, the, in between these counties, we have this county we have um, Raleigh, North Carolina, Greensboro, and yeah, North Carolina is a state with a lot of cities too, so keep that in mind. Yeah, it's like Florida. North Carolina and Florida are very, very comparable. Um, we have Raleigh, uh, Stamp, so Winston, Salem, High Point, yeah. I, so yeah, what do you guys think about this? Do you think North Carolina is a state that would fly to Republicans? Ultimately, we have um, important races coming up in a week that we are going to be talking about. Before I leave here, I want to inform you on the Turkish presidential election that will be taking place in a week on Sunday, the May 14th. So on Sunday, May 14th, Turkey will have their presidential election. This is a chance for the left wing of Turkey to overtake Ordogan, um, Recep Tayyip Ordogan, a part of the AKP, a far-right alliance in Turkey. Turkey has aligned itself with the far-right conservative party in Turkey for many years. However, this election seems to be very different according to polls. The polls are right here saying that the socialists, I won't say they're socialists, but they're center left, are actually leading in the polls. Well, I'm, I'm critical about this because Turkey is a c country with, I would say, corrupted politics. Um, they don't really have safe elections like we do. So, and it's also strong government. And the government is very influential to the election. So I do think Orokadin will probably win this election. Um, not to mention he has remained undefeated in his whole political career. This would make a huge deal in the media. Um, and not to mention, Kila Kargu, this guy, will become the very first left-wing president in a very long time in Turkey. And, and Turkey's not really a fan with the left-wing. Another thing we're going to talk about on May 15th is the 2023 Kentucky 
gubernatorial election. The primary is going to be taking place there. We will be having their primaries on May 16th, not May 15th, excuse me. Um, so that's Tuesday. So I'll have my video on Turkey out by then. The results for Turkey should be out. However, they will have, they might have a potential second round uh, on May 28th. But yeah, we'll have our primaries. We'll, um, the primaries will be, will start uh, May 16th. We'll be taking a look on the results on Wednesday. Video on that should be released. See if Andy Bashir will be renominated, which I bet he will for sure be renominated because he's the governor after all. Um, and then we have the Republicans. See if Daniel Cameron, Kelly Kraft endorse this. Daniel Cameron, a Trump endorsed candidate. Kelly Kraft uh, Ted, endorsed by Ted Cruz, Savannah Maddox, oh yeah, we get these minor candidates down here, but yeah, we have these Republican primary debates, and here, I'd expect Daniel Cameron to win, because he's a Trump endorsed, um, anyway, and here's the polling, <laughs> very close race, um, I'd say, Republicans ha have a better shot at taking Andy Bashir out, uh, out with Daniel Cameron, but this still seems to be a Democrat win. Anyway, what do you guys think about this video? Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next political episode.